Hi divers, thank you for tuning in. In this video, I take you through the recreational classes GOE offers and especially how you start diving with GOE as a non-diver coming up. I wish you all a happy new year 2022. I took a break from YouTube for around a month or so because I was busy with some sidekicks and I just needed to have a break over Christmas. And now, now I am back. Yeah, it feels great to do another video. By the way, thank you everyone who watched my videos in 2021 and especially thank you to everyone who sends me messages or comments on my videos because these comments help me to come up with new video ideas and i'm very happy to make videos you guys like to see so please please keep posting me comments and ask questions and request specific videos like this one. I get some questions about the GOE course system and especially what prerequisites exist and what kind of equipment you need and since GOE offers a number of classes, I decided to make it a short series and today, first things first, let's talk about the recreational curriculum and how to start with GOE as a non-diver. The first way and in my opinion a very excellent way to start your diving career is by taking a GOE Discover Diving. Almost every agency has something similar and it is a great way to see if diving is really for you. However, the Discover Diving program is not just a tryout dive. So what I know from most agencies and dive centers when it comes to tryout dives you mostly just get the tanks on your bag and a foggy mask on your face, fins if you're lucky, and somebody literally drags you through a pool for like 10 minutes. Please tell me in the comments about your worst tryout dives, no matter if you were a student or you just watched it, I'd like to read your story. Anyway, this is not what I personally and not what GOE thinks how I discovered diving should be like. When I do a Discover Diving, it's usually conducted over at least four hours, mostly a whole day. We start with some academics of diving, go over the basic equipment, and I always try to have my students neutrally buoyant, because being able to hover above the ground instead of kneeling is the most important skill in all scuba diving, and that's why I teach this from the very, very beginning. And quite frankly, only being literally weightless underwater gives you the impression of what scuba diving is like. And that's the whole point when doing a discover diving. And yeah, I know that I might get some comments from people saying that's impossible to learn that skill after a couple of hours of training. But believe me, it is possible to learn it. Maybe not master it, but learn it. The required equipment here is pretty easy. Nothing. Normally, the dive center or instructor running this program has equipment for you, so you only need to bring personal stuff like swim shorts, towel and so on, and there are no requirements except medical fitness for diving and being a non-smoker like in any other GOE course and being 14 years already. After completing the Discover Diving, you most likely know if diving and GOE is for you or not. If you like to literally dive in a bit deeper, but you're not sure if you feel really comfortable, the Recreational Supervised Diver class is for you. You learn all the basic skills you need to know for a safe dive up to 12 meters of depth under the supervision of a dive professional. You learn a bit more about your equipment, dive physics and so on during that class. However, you're not an autonomous diver after it and that's something you should consider. You always need a GOE certified dive leader to go diving, so this course is for you if you like to learn in small increments or just your available time does not allow a complete Recreational Diver 1 class. The prerequisites are the same as for the Discovered Diving. 
However, I personally don't recommend the Recreation Supervised Diver to most of the divers, since I personally think that people who like to dive should do the complete Rec 1 class and be able to dive autonomously, what brings me to the Recreational Diver 1 class. The Recreational Diver 1 or Rec 1 is GOE's beginner's class and it's in my opinion the best beginner's class money can buy because it's very unlike similar classes other agencies offer. It follows GOE's philosophy beginning with the end in mind and you learn what you need to enjoy a dive up to 21 meters and I emphasize the word enjoy because in beginners classes people often only learn how to survive such a dive. But scuba diving is more than just breathing and switching regulators underwater and clearing your mask and the Rec 1 takes you there. You learn trim and buoyancy control, sound safety protocols, communication skills and you already start using nitrox mixes and, depending on where you take the class, using a dry suit. So the Rec 1 is not just an ordinary open water class, it's an open water class, advanced open water class, nitrox diver, dry suit diver class combined. Because all these things are necessary to safely enjoy a dive. So in my opinion it is the best beginner scuba class, but since I pretty much live from teaching these classes, maybe I'm a bit biased. Anyway. I wish I could have taken this class when I learned diving back in the old days. By standards, the class is conducted over 5 days, but to be honest, I personally teach it usually over at least 6 really, really full days, which is in my opinion the minimum time you should invest in a scuba class. If your class only lasts 3 or 4 days, it's very likely that you will miss something in the end. So let's get to the requirements. Age-wise, you need to be at least 14 years old to take the class, but until you are 15 years old, you need to dive under direct supervision of an adult diver who has at least an autonomous diver license, which must not necessarily be a GOE license. When it comes to equipment, most likely your instructor will have it for you, or at least I have it for my students. Generally, you need the GOE base equipment and additionally a simple snorkel without perch valve. If you'd like to know what exactly the GOE base equipment list is, check the link in the description, you will find the complete base equipment list according to the GOE standards there. Before we move on to Rec 2 and Rec 3, please consider subscribing to my channel and don't miss the next videos of this series. So apparently after Rec 1 there comes Rec 2 and this is a great class to reach greater depth safely. It can be done in two different ways. The first one is taking the class as an entire course over five consecutive days. The second way is to complete the GOE Rescue Primer, the Navigation Primer and the Triox Primer separately. And this pretty much outlines the course contents. This course focuses especially on these three fields. First, Rescue. So you'll learn efficient techniques to help and rescue a distressed or unconscious diver for instance. Although this is also content of the Rec 1 class, in the Rec 2 class we spend much much more time on efficient rescue techniques and we practice them a lot. The second important course content is underwater navigation. In Rec 1 you already learned basic navigation skills, but in the Rec 2 we go again much deeper into it. The third topic is Triox. The Rec 2 class teaches you how to safely use a Triox mix, so a mixture of 30% oxygen, 30% helium and around 40% nitrogen for dives up to 30 meters slash 100 feet in minimum decompression limits. It's a great class and will take your knowledge really, really to a new level. Let's talk about the prerequisites of the Rec 2 class. You need to be at least 16 years old and be Rec 1 or GOE Fundamentals Rec certified with at least 25 non-training dives after the Rec 1 or Fundamentals class. 
I don't talk so much about the fundamentals class in this series because I made an entire series on the GUI fundamentals class here on YouTube. Just check the link at the end of this video if you'd like to know more about the GUI fundamentals class. When it comes to the necessary equipment, you need the GUI base equipment, but frankly, I'd suggest a double tank, although it is not required for the class. Second, you will need one primary and two backup lights, and I warmly recommend, pun intended, a dry suit inflation system if using a dry suit. Remember that diving helium mixes is part of this class, and due to the thermal conductivity of helium, it'll start getting really, really chilly soon if you inflate the dry suit with your back gas. Many people ask me, however, which dry suit inflation system you should get, and in my opinion, 0.85 or 1 liter is sufficient. You do not need large inflation tanks for this class. Last thing I'd recommend to bring to the class is at least one primary reel per team so you can use it to train guideline work during the navigation part. Now let's get to one of my favorite GUI classes, the Recreational Diver 3 Aurec 3 class. This is the first Trimix and Deku diving class GUI offers. The main topic of this class is using a Trimix 2135, meaning a mixture of 21% oxygen and 35% helium up to 39 meters slash 130 feet and safely doing a dive that requires mandatory decompression stops using a decompression gas different from the gas in your tanks on the back. The class is normally conducted over five consecutive days and you really, really polish your diving skills here. We do a hell of a sense and now they need to be really, really precise and controlled ones. A new skill that is introduced in the Rec 3 class is the gas switch. This is necessary because you are going to use a deco bottle with Nitrox 32 as a deco gas and you need to switch to that bottle during the ascent. You see, the workload increases and now we start to get serious. Still, you should not see this class as a low-level technical diving class, but as an extremely advanced recreational class. To take this class, you need to be at least 18 years old and be certified as a GOE Rec 2 diver or GOE Fundamentals Rec with at least 25 non-training dives after Rec 2 or Fundamentals and 75 non-training dives after your autonomous scuba diver certification like Reg 1. Besides the GUI base equipment, you need to use double tanks on this class and hence should be proficient in using it, so meaning having at least 25 non-training dives in a double tank configuration or having completed the GUI doubles primer I talk about in the next video of this series, by the way. So you need GOE base equipment, double tanks, primary and two backup lights. Again, you dive with helium mixtures here, so you will need a dry suit inflation system and for most divers still, the dry suit inflation tank with 0.85 liter is just enough. Last but not least, you will need a decompression cylinder with a stage regulator. The decompression tank should be an aluminum tank. I personally always recommend AL80, so 80 cubic feet tanks, because I think you could use these tanks easily when progressing to Tech 1 or Tech 2 or Cave 2 one day. But if you do not feel comfortable with big deco tanks, you could easily use a 7 liter aluminum tank. Even the AL40 could be sufficient since the deco times are rather short on Rec 3 dives. But for safety and mainly logistical reasons, I don't really like the 40 cubic feet tanks and normally never recommend them. The deco bottle itself should be marked with an MOD sticker on the inner and the outer side, close to the neck of the tank. The unit of the MOD sticker should be according to the area you use the tank, obviously, so in the US you would use imperial numbers, in Europe, for instance, you would prefer metric numbers. As a state regulator for the deco tank, you could use any high quality regulator. However, I like the ones uh, with a turnable turret like this one, which makes the hose routing easier. As additional equipment for the Rec 3, I recommend a gas analyzer, which can analyze helium mixes. 
most likely your instructor will bring one to the class anyway. But if you want to dive Trimix, and I suppose you will if you take this class, then you should own a suitable analyzer in my opinion. The Rec 3 is a great class to really reach a new level and enables you to dive hundreds of interesting locations. Many, many very cool wrecks are in the Rec 3 range, so in my opinion, it's worth taking this class. In the next episodes of this series, I talk about GOE's foundational curriculum and of course about the requirements for GOE's technical and CAVE classes. As always, if you have further questions, leave me a comment, I'm happy to answer them as quickly as possible. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and ring the bell and don't miss out on the other videos of this series as they are released. In the meantime, watch my other videos. See you there.